Namaste. And now for the dramatic conclusion of the truth about the truth about the truth. It's early enough that I don't need my shades. <laughs> okay. So far, we talked about the truth and how there really is no such thing as a simple truth. Truth is always qualified. It's never exact or precise or complete. Any truth that you can state is imperfect. So then how do we find tr truth? Well, <laughs> the truth about the truth is that any truth has to exist in some context to give it meaning. Even the meaning of being true comes from its relation to the context. And in Vedic culture, we recognize four contexts. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, and Jnana Yoga. So these four contexts are the truth about the truth. What makes the truth about the truth superior to the truth is that the context is explicit. The context is freely, openly given or mentioned. We're talking now in Karma Yoga or we're talking now in Bhakti Yoga or Raja Yoga or Jnana. So then the background and the foreground are both clear. If they're not, then somebody's selling you a pack of lies. Uh, or if somebody says, this is the only truth, this is the only way. Huh? No, no. It depends on the person receiving the truth. And this is the key to actual truth. Truth must lead to self-realization. If it doesn't, it's not really truth. That's our definition of truth. So the truth about the truth about the truth <laughs> is that there's no such thing as a simple truth. Truth has to exist in context, and that context has to lead to self-realization. Otherwise, it's bogus. It's phony. It's false. So if you see, for example, some spiritual teacher, and they're giving all these teachings and methods and knowledge and whatnot, but none of their disciples are reaching their level, it's bogus. It's not truth. It's been salted. It's been mm, contaminated with something else, usually egotism of some kind. So be careful. Weigh the truths that you're given in light of these values, and you won't make a mistake. Okay, so what does it really mean now? Hmm. These four contexts, jnana, raja, bhakti, and karma yoga, are equivalent to the four states of consciousness. Huh? Waking consciousness, dreaming consciousness, deep sleep, and the fourth, turiya, nirvana, that which cannot be described. For example, in karma yoga, we are concerned with the outside world. We're doing rituals, we're observing principles, we're following rules. We're doing this and we're doing that and we're dedicating it all to the service of God. That's karma yoga in a nutshell. Bhakti yoga is like a beautiful dream where we imagine the perfect form of God, perfect for us anyway. They're in innumerable forms of God. So you imagine having a relationship 
direct personal relationship with that form of God. And this brings up spontaneous love. And that's bhakti. That spontaneous love is bhakti. It's a beautiful dream. And then there's finally Raja Yoga. In Raja Yoga, everything disappears. Everything is illusion. Neti, neti. Uh, we reject this, we reject that, we, we reject everything. Everything is nothing. Nothing is everything. <laughs> and so, we finally wind up in emptiness. Uh -huh. Neither perception nor non-perception. We don't know if we're perceptic or not because there's nothing to perceive. Uh, that's the seventh, eighth jhana. And from there, Nibbana, Brahman, blooms spontaneously within the emptiness. And that is full self-realization. So, <laughs> people talk about experiences. Oh, I saw this God, or I saw that light, or I saw this pulsating purple whatever. <laughs> Somebody wrote me that the other day. Experiences are not enlightenment. You are enlightenment. The self. The self is eternal, never born, never dies. Always aware. Huh? And that's the fourth state, Turiya. The state of enlightenment, moksha. Huh? Freedom. And talk about bliss, man. Bliss is cheap. Huh? Bliss is on sale at the dollar store, man. Bliss. <laughs> Bliss is on special on aisle three, you know. <laughs> bliss is easy. I gave all the techniques leading to bliss in the Secret of the Golden Flower series. So if you want bliss, go watch that. But if you want enlightenment, enlightenment is non different from the self, yourself, myself, the self. There's only one. And in that state, all knowledge is there. Uh, but you don't care for it because everything is perfect. Well, it can't be described, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> you just have to experience it for yourself. Now, somebody's going to say, how? <laughs> By these four yogas. Karma yoga, bhakti yoga. Raja Yoga and Jnana Yoga. Because the four states of consciousness are interpenetrating, fully existent all the time. This is why we came up with our theory about yoga that uh, there has to be a yoga practice for each chakra and they have to go on simultaneously to reach full enlightenment. Okay, and uh, the teaching of Ramana Maharshi cleared that up even further. There are these four yogas which correspond to the four states of consciousness. And they are always going on simultaneously. Now the focus, your attention, may be on one or the other. But the practices and the uh, states of consciousness themselves go on all the time, okay? Even to a Raja Yogi sitting in a cave, meditating on nothingness, emptiness, huh? his mind is blank. But he still has a body. He still has to feed it and take care of it. That's karma yoga. And he still has a love, even if it's love of the self, or love of emptiness, or love of the Buddha, or whatever, huh? he still loves something. Maybe he loves the truth. That's bhakti. That love of truth is what's driving him to sit in that cave and get there and make it and arrive at what? <laughs> well, when you actually arrive at 
the fourth state, you realize, I've been here all along. I never left this state. And you know, by direct experience, there is no goal, there is no path, there is no method, there is no yoga because there are no two things to be joined. Yoga means joining, linking. And there have to be two things to link. But when you transcend duality, there ain't no two things. <laughs> How many things are there? <laughs> We're not going to say. We can't say. Because in that state, there's no way to count. See? As soon as you say everything is one, one and one is two, <laughs> two and one is three, before you know it, you have the everything again, huh? the whole mess back again. So we say, no, it's indeterminate. It's ir irresolvable. It's unknowable. Ineffable, indescribable. Because otherwise, it leads back to the same duality again. Oh, we're getting some eggs, sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes again. <laughs> anyway, life goes on. Huh? Karma yoga is going on. And uh, bhakti yoga is going on. Because we all have something that we love. And raja yoga is going on. If only in sleep at night. Huh? But one can attain this state fully awake. And uh, that is the state of freedom from all troubles. Okay. And that leads spontaneously to full self-realization. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why aren't I just sitting here and blissing out? Huh? I got me a new cave and it's really cool and delicious. So... Uh, why don't, why don't I just sit here on my lotus chair and uh, enjoy? Why do I go to the trouble of making all these videos? Because I know from your point of view, you're suffering. You're entangled. You're attached. Huh? You're involved with all this stuff. And you don't know how to get free. So I'm giving you some pointers. Huh? These aren't instructions. I'm not your guru. I'm not anybody's guru. <laughs> I'm not a teacher either. Because what is there to teach you? You are already it, from my point of view. And you already have these four states of consciousness, which means you're already performing the four yogas, whether you know it or not. I'm simply taking away the shadows. I'm simply removing the coverings from the truth so that you can see it plainly. Now, I know none of you guys are really ready to be disciples, but if anybody wants to play the disciple game, and I'm up for that, but you have to convince me that you're for real. I've been cheated too many times. And I'm from New York. <laughs> so you cheat me once, bad on me. Uh, cheat me twice, you're out of here. <laughs> so I'm very vigilant. And I won't easily share my life with anybody because it means losing my freedom. So it's okay to make some videos. That's not going to hurt me. That's, that's anything's, you know, nobody can touch me <laughs> through the videos. But this gives you a direction. This gives you a way to practice. This gives you a point of view where you can see things as they are. And that's the truth about the truth about the truth. <laughs> Om Tatsat. Om Harihi Om. <laughs>